Hello, hello. Evening. The crunching. Yes. Yes, the crunching. Hold on. Oh man, we're still sculpting easy peasy with Paul Deasy. <laughs> Hey Reaver, how are you doing? Hey Bat. How's it going guys? Let me see if I can edit the title. Mm. I don't know. I <laughs> What's my title normally on uh, on Twitch? Oh jeez. I think it's. Well, then I'll go on to the YouTube video. F around and find out. Yeah, but I mean, like, professionally speaking. Uh. I think it's. Creature and character. Hold on, I gotta change the title here. Then, grab, aim. Really bad at this. Patient. There we go. Done. You rah. Hey CT fan, how are you doing? Alright. Okay. So, let me do an intro to everybody new here and to anybody who's going to be watching this on YouTube later, which, by the way, if you're not subscribed to um, Pixelogic's YouTube channel or following on Twitch or anywhere else, definitely do that. There's a lot of really other really amazing other great artists that stream on this uh, channel. <laughs> um, actually, Paul Deasy was right before I was, and he was doing a really cool Hellboy sculpt, so definitely check that out as well. But um, if you're new to uh, the Pixelogic channel and my streams, I'm Ashley Adams, and I take a sphere and I mash it around on stream, and I kind of just like sculpt sketch sketch in 3d and kind of create like whatever um i did this one on my own personal stream on friday but this is like the generalized idea like this is basically what ends up happening um in, in a way is so i'll just kind of like create something random and go with it uh no these are not for print no these are not for production this is quite literally just what you would do if you wanted to try sketching in 3d right like it's it's a very like relaxed time like we're not getting into like technicalities or anything like that it's very much just like focusing on silhouette and overall readability things of that nature things that'll like really catch your eye when you do that initial render and then i usually do paint overs of my renders as well um that's usually how i i do like my pitch work for uh professional purposes and things like that i i work in both 2d and 3d when i'm working on a final image for client so a lot of the time that's what this sort of a process is it's just sketching just totally sketching totally chill no we don't care about poly count no we don't care about the crunchies actually the crunchies are welcome i like the crunchies personally the crunchy geo like the stretched nasty artifact geo that everybody is just like ew you filthy scum what are you doing it's beautiful it's perfect in these situations trust me but if you're not if you're not into that kind of thing i understand too but uh if you're into like understanding how to like sketch in 3d that's what we do here we just sketch we just be messy hey void hey emil 
Hey, Filippo. All right. Okay, so I'm just gonna get started then. If you have any questions while I'm going, feel free to ask away. Change this playlist first. I like it. It's too happy. Not. Do we have. I'm looking on Pretzel Rocks right now. Synth wave, sure. Yeah. Hey, Poopzilla. All right. I'm gonna get rid of this one. Play. And uh, frame our sphere. All right. It's gonna get started here. Thinking actually, what if, what if we make a sphere monster, right? Oyster, put on roids. Hmm. Hey, Star Ghost. What's good? What you making? But round monsters are the new cool. I mean, why not try? Oh, it's a sassy elf. How are you doing? How's it going? Oh yeah, Matt. I can't I can't live without the full version. I I struggle. <laughs> oh my god, dude, that's that's a mood. I had a I had a day today. I'm like recovering from all of the anxiety. <laughs> Uh, question. You mentioned a few years ago about the starving artist thing never working. COVID has put a massive wrench in the works of lots of digital artists worldwide, causing crazy layoffs. As someone who mainly works at home, how do you deal with the crippling depression of not being good enough anymore, being forced to work in a horrible day job far from your art degree, having varying degrees of imposter syndrome? So, CT fan, I'm going to be coming at this from... I have to come at this logically because I haven't really been in that position, which I, and I don't want to come off as insensitive about this either, because I do understand that a lot of people are like struggling with that and, and, and the like, but I, I personally have not, um, had to really deal with that, but the imposter syndrome I can relate to and I can talk about. Oh, no, 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 I, I understand you're not specifically directing it at me, but I have to come at it like I'm just pre prefacing this so you don't take it like the wrong way or anything like that, because I do understand that like a lot of people like yourself are are going through things right now that are are pretty rough, like really, really rough. And I think like one, the main thing to understand is everyone almost everyone is going through some kind of an issue with this pandemic BS, right? Almost everybody is in a way there with you as like dumb as that sounds but dealing with like imposter syndrome and like not not really like being able to connect with people um emotionally you know because we're so distant from each other is a is a very big problem and how i usually deal with that is well you can see like i end up streaming right because i find that if I'm in like a really bad mental state, talking to you guys, even though it is sort of like a one-way street in a way, I'm still getting some kind of a social interaction with people, right? So if there is some kind of a way that you can reach out to any of your friends or maybe make some kind of like a study group or join some discords and things like that and, and, and share your work with other peers, because a lot of people are going through it. In my, in my discord alone, actually, there was a couple of people um, in general chat that started talking about how they were feeling in terms of basically what you're saying and just trying to find the way to just keep going and going and going. Um, and I think I think a lot of people get 
a, a sense of comfort and motivation from talking to each other about that problem in itself you know you don't you can't revel in it right but like talking to each other and the one thing that i i, I kind of said to everybody is like if you're if you're struggling with art you know and thinking that you're garbage just remember that every bad piece of artwork that you do it's kind of like kindling to a bonfire and you see the more the, the more of that kindling that you stack on top of itself you know the more bad work over and over and over you put on top of itself the better that bonfire the bigger that bonfire is going to be right so um that's <laughs> i call it the trash fire right so just keep throwing yourself at it keep trying to do the things that you want to do and as much as possible distance yourself from comparing yourself to the very end of the line right make goal posts for yourself um a lot of imposter syndrome comes from unrealistic expectations as well so it's it's hard for me to answer this question because like i I don't really know how to fully solve it. Like, there's not like a, a, like, this is specifically how you're gonna get through it. I just think that, you know, finding ways to connect with other people is incredibly important and pushing yourself, but don't push yourself too much. You have to take your breaks, right? And, you know, understand that everybody's got their own path and how you get there and how long it takes you is different for everyone and to not really like, don't put that much pressure on yourself because at the end of the day you know like art art is uh doing art is it's a journey right it's not a destination it never has been a destination you know some people will be sprinting faster than you but they're not running anywhere right you have your whole life to do these things and uh and that's why i think you just gotta be really kind to yourself that's all yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, fan. If I'm not very good at like answering these questions either, I, uh, I do my best. But yeah, it's, it's a, it's a tough one. And if you can, just kind of share yourself in like you know social communities if you can, like you know discords for, for artists and things like that. I find helps talking to other people. I think you should be more direct and teach something more objective. So, Jewel, if you don't like the way that these streams go, I completely understand. Um, there's like there's other artists that stream on the Pixelogic channel as well. If they're more your speed, definitely go and check them out and and try and find who is like the best uh, teaching method and the best, you know hangout partner in a sense right because these streams are not really just like tutorial sessions they're they're kind of like a, a mix of hangout and uh, ask questions and things like that in terms of like actually like teaching teaching i'm i haven't really signed up to give everybody like a course right now or anything like that i'm just sort of like i'm just i'm just streaming to sketch really that's that's all that this is so if you don't really uh care for that there's like a lot of other good artists that you could um check out and you know what actually that that's a good that's a good thing to bring let, let to, to bring up as well as a lot of people um tell me that i should be doing things differently a lot of the time too on this stream so when it comes to imposter syndrome i'm constantly and i'm, I'm getting i'm getting better at it but i'm constantly having to take criticism because of being public i take criticism and i have to learn how to um figure out which ones are the good ones that I would like to apply to myself and art and streaming and the ones that it's just like, okay, well, maybe you should be directed elsewhere, right? Because again, like imposter syndrome comes from the pressure of outside, you know, but also the pressure of outside that you put on yourself as well. So kind of a balance, right? Love Death and Robots Volume 2. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's going to be super, super cool. I loved the first one. I didn't want to watch, like, I, I kind of skimmed the trailer because I didn't want to, like, spoil it too much. I think, um, Ghost, you said the same thing, like, you didn't want to watch the trailer because I didn't want to, like, spoil anything because I know that it's just going to be really good and I don't want to, like... So I didn't really, like, watch the trailer. <laughs> I just kind of skimmed it. Hey, Alex.
Oh, and another thing too, Fan, is I'm going to be upfront with you and say that it's like I, um, in terms of dealing with like depression, it's not necessarily depression that really like is the bother one, bothersome one for me. It's anxiety. I have, so again, with like that putting, putting pressure on yourself thing, right? And when things don't work your way, like maybe you have really high expectations of your own, um, artwork and things don't go as planned for me I I have panic attacks and I'm not I'm not even just saying that like I'm being very upfront and open with you guys right now I, I had one today actually <laughs> that's why I said on my sorry let's be chill on this stream um, so it's it's very it, it is one of those things where you have to just kind of be good to yourself and give yourself the time if you need a break take it um, but like I said, everybody's running, you know, you could, you could look and see that everybody's running, but you have to understand that there is no final destination. Okay. That's, uh, that's not in terms of the movie, but you know what I mean? <laughs> We're not talking about the horror. So. It's a hot dog! <laughs> this is a hot dog. Hot dog. Hey, Lemon. How do you keep motivation? Um, motivation is a hard one for me as well. I... I find that I have the most motivation to work on my person. Everybody's gonna be different here, but I'll tell you what I do, what I found about myself anyways, is the more pressure that I have on myself, like from work and things like that, the more I feel like I wanna do my own work. So <laughs> I'll have a completely full schedule like I have now for my clients and work and i will be thinking to myself wow i really want to do artwork and i think that that comes from the fact that i'm doing so much i'm being forced to do so much that that ball is rolling and so then i already have ideas that are going and going and going if you don't have a ball rolling, then it's kind of one of those things where it's just, it fizzles out and dies. So if you don't have clients on your butt, if you're not doing this professionally or whatever, and you don't have that same sort of a thing that I was just talking about, then maybe you, you're gonna wanna get your motivation from a schedule, you know, regiment yourself. So every single night you force yourself to do one hour, if you can afford to do one hour a night of sketching it doesn't matter if it's good or bad like it really doesn't the idea is that you're doing something every single night and forcing that because if you kind of just like sit there and let whatever happen inspiration doesn't really just it chooses really stupid times to show up aka 3 a.m on tuesday nights i don't know so if you want it to be a little bit more convenient and predictable then you have to force it to come out which only happens if you force a lot of bad work out of your system as well right so regimented, like, okay, I'm gonna do this one hour a night, one hour a night, I'm, that would probably work pretty well. What am I making? I honestly don't know. It's a hot dog right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll turn it into something, I promise. It's, it's looking like a, it's looking like blood, yeah, okay, thanks, pale. Bloodborne banner. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, Mess. Um, how long have I been using ZBrush before I was comfortable with it? I'd say before I was comfortable with it, I probably, I was using it for like a year before I was like, heck yeah, I can just sit down and like sketch whatever. Before that, I, I feel like, like before like one, the one year mark, I was definitely like finagling with everything. You know what I mean? Like I, I was just like being really, um, really particular about everything that I did but then I started to understand like you know the tool set and stuff so it stopped being super particular I think I'm gonna do something like this
Hot dog night. <laughs> Hey Jose, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Also, guys, uh, Jose is a streamer on the Pixelogic channel as well. You should check him out. He's a badass. Are you, are you seeing what you think you're seeing? Honestly, this is nothing right now. So if you're seeing anything, that's all in your head. I'm trying to figure out. I'm gonna keep like a really, really simple, smooth silhouette this time. I don't want big eyes like that, I don't think. Do I use the lazy mouse function? Um, I use the lazy mouse function when I want to be pretty precise or if I have too much caffeine and my hand is shaking, but normally I just kind of like go at it. Hey Hexo! You're starting out and trying to make design every day, but you're struggling to make it look clean. Trying to make it look like the World of Warcraft stylized style. I think the best way to do that is, um... Uh, you know, work with like the the uh, clay polish brush um, and the pinch brush as well. So when when doing planar stuff, um, one trick that I have is using the pinch brush. Right, is you can actually create nice planes using it. Right, and then you can smooth that over with the H polish brush. So then you can get some nice, uh, sharp edges. So that's something that you could consider doing. Is that a spider? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> hey Adams, how are you? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's, it's going to be more of like a, a beetle type thing. And I don't really like care about like any of this crunchy stuff, right? Because that's that's essentially all just gonna eat go away. We're gonna dynamesh. There's too much. 
Um, I could probably take. I just usually, if I don't really know what I'm doing, but I wanted to keep a simple silhouette. You can see I, I usually do a lot of like sketching on top and then I'll do some masking and pulling and just kind of like seeing if it wants to do anything special for me. If not, whatever, no hard feeling. Sketch, 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 sketch. Hey creative, how are you? How long have I been using ZBrush? I think seven years. Must be seven years. Pretty sure. Is it possible to rig and animate in ZBrush? No. Um, I mean, you can use Z spheres for moving things around, like the, the, the Z sphere rigs, but that's not the intent of it. It's not like to um, to animate or anything like that. You know, I've seen people do stop motion stuff with layers in ZBrush, but again, it's not. That's not what ZBrush is for. ZBrush is um, for sculpting, uh, but you can create like. Uh, blend shapes and things like that for external uh, external use so in Maya or wherever your you know maybe blender or wherever that you're gonna be doing your rigging and animating but no zebrush zebrush in general is not really for that shouldn't say, even say not really like it isn't meant for that specifically Yeah, I'm very comfortable with ZBrush. It's my, it's pretty much my, the center of my job, honestly, besides painting. Um, yeah, pretty much is, my job is just doing ZBrush. <laughs> oh, hi Shane. Shane is another amazing artist on the Pixelogic channel. He does um, very, very good stylized, uh, Characters and if you like like a really simple breakdown of like how shapes work and things like that Definitely go and check out his streams. He's awesome You want to change your bed sheets <laughs> Actually, yeah, let's 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 make it like full kind of like nasty. I kind of want to do like oh What if we go like full tick? What if we go like full tick? Oh my god! <laughs> it's funny how just one translation can turn it from a beetle into a tick. There's also a policy. I already did your plug at the very beginning of the stream because my name was still your name. Don't even, you want to fight me? You want to fight me? You want it? Okay, $5, I'll plug you again. <laughs> uh. Um. So technically you can make the model in ZBrush. And then use Blender to rig for animation. You're a concept artist, student, but the game jam you're doing right now, you've been tasked with game character model. Got you, okay. So yeah, you could you could do like the high poly. You could even like retopologize in ZBrush if you really wanted to. And then um, you know, the rest of the pipeline you would do in another software. Yes, you are correct. So you could use like Blender or Maya or whatever for like your rigging and animating. <laughs> hey Gabe, what's up? Look, like everybody's here, man. It's great. So good. Tick sack. Too late. I already said it out loud. Tick sack. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, we're we're doing we're doing it live. We're doing ticks. We're doing something tick related. It's happening. With grabby, feely hands that are very large and nasty. That's what's gonna happen. Very tick like. Yes, good. Why do I want this? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I hate ticks. Ticks make me super uncomfortable. Anybody has an animal and you've gone hiking with them, at one point you were probably blessed with them getting a tick. Mm. Mm. Has anybody ever had to like remove a tick? Mm. Remove a tick from... You know what? Let's not talk about this, actually. You know, we don't need to go there, actually. We, we don't need to... It's snowing out today, you know? So... Yeah. Hey! What's up, Kevin? What's good? Wait, is this my dad, Kevin? Or is this, um... Director Kevin? <laughs> JK. Blessed is a word I would use. Yes, so blessed. <laughs> the better one. Oh no. <laughs> Why you gotta do this? Why? Why do you have to do this? I'm just gonna lump you guys both into the same one. Hi, Dad. <laughs> uh, your sister had one back in the back in her. Oh, your sister had one in her. We don't need to talk about this. It's not. You know what? Why did I even? Why did I do that? Why did I even bother? Yikes, man. Yeah, ghost stuff. Everything's good. Everything's good. I just, I, I usually just start kind of talking and then I'm, I immediately regret asking the questions that I ask and, uh, and I have to backpedal a little bit. <laughs> I just have to like grab my stomach a little bit and then, and then we can, we can talk about, um, Picks. I'm sorry, it's just so, it's so visceral. If you've ever had to actually remove a tick, I just, I, as soon as like I start talking about things, I can, I can imagine it again and it just. No! Bad, no! Bad! Uh, actually, the worst thing about these ticks is that they have like these like dimples, dude. Like ticks, I don't know. <laughs> why am I doing this? Honestly, why am I sculpting a tick? I hate ticks. Like this is making me uncomfortable. Why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Except it's like a beetle, so it's like a beetle tick. No, you know what? No, it's not a beetle. It's just a tick. An alien tick. We're not even doing the beetle. We're going like we're we're going full tick. It's gonna go full pain. Max pain. Uh, like they they've got like these like dimples and like these hairs that stick out of them. It's like the worst. Their backs are like these blood cushions. With a hint of Shrek, practically. All right, so we'll pull this guy up. Yes, beauty. Here and then, and then we'll like really exaggerate this stupid thing. Oh my god! You know what we could do too, because like. This, I don't feel like, is gonna take me very long at all. Like, we've done this for 15 minutes now, like, not even. So, like, you know what we could probably do? Is we could duplicate these all over... 
A forest of hair that could be the carpet of some animal's pelt. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, cicadas are so cool. I shared a cicada to my, um... I shared a cicada, like a, a, a completely like white and gold and a little hint of like blue cicada. It was so beautiful and its wings were like trans transparent. I shared that onto my Instagram story the other day. Wow, that was a beautiful thing, dude. Fiber mesh, go. Fiber mesh animal pelt. <laughs> no, cake stop. Dude, I hate it. Oh my god, one of the- Okay, here, let me tell you about like one of like the nastiest- it, it, It's not tick related, but it is bug related. Um, one of the nastiest things for myself that I had to deal with was when I was a kid, I went hiking with my brothers and my dad, and we fell down a ravine and hit a wasp nest, and we were completely like engulfed in wasps, and by the time that we got back to the car, like we had to like tweezer out wasps from like our like eyebrows from our scalp and everything they were like stuck in it was you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome i know this is good talking material good talking material that tick tv show there was an animated series and live action tv show no i don't i don't and i don't want it i don't want it no 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 yeah, it was a great time. I had a great time. That was so great. That was really great. That was good. It was good. Good memories. Good times. Hey, but you know, you learn, you learn the hard way that bees are friend, wasps are bad. <laughs> But wasps get stuck in you. They, their, their stingers are like barbed. They get stuck and it hurts. <laughs> yeah, so Kickster, imagine like your whole head being engulfed. <laughs> we were like swollen children. It was, uh... Mm. <laughs> um, Pac-Man, I'm using a, uh... I was about to say Intuos, I'm not using an Intuos. This is a Cintiq 22 HD. Thank you, Alex Wax, I appreciate it. You're incredible for stopping by. Please sculpt a swole child with wasp hair. No. <laughs> Patrick or Burton was the tick? Wait, the animated tick? Was it an animated tick? Wait, hold on, what? Dude. I'm not old, okay? <laughs> I mean, I am old, but I'm not, I'm not like old, okay? <laughs> like, I'm not like old. <laughs> I see them, see everybody like run, like reach through the monitor and punch me in the face. Shut up, Zoomer. Not even a Zoomer. Shut up, Zoomer. The live action tick was played by no, the live act. Wait. Oh, no, no, no. It was out in the 90s. I'm not. Okay. You know what? Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> I would have been like a fetus. I would have been a fetus. Like, I don't remember that. Let's give it legs. I think I'm going to do this with this. Oh my god, that would be so fun. It's just gonna have legs that do this. Maybe. Or. Or just like really tiny ones. Really tiny ones? Yeah, there's are really tiny ones. What's my favorite beetle? Honestly, I don't know. There's too many cool beetles that I can say, like, one specifically is my favorite. There's so many beetle species. 
and I have the worst memory when it comes to the names of these things, so... But I share all kinds of macro photography on my uh, Instagram these days. Like, I, I just kind of figured out how to really use my stories. And I recently finally got that 10k follower mark on my stories. So now I can actually do swipe ups and stuff. Hell yeah. A couple of people got angry at me because the first swipe up that I did on my story was a Rickroll. People weren't happy. I really don't understand why. Uh, a fetus riding a tick. Full people, yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, have a, have a tube coming out of it. <laughs> John Lennon is your fa- oh. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you, Paul. Thank you so much for hanging out, Dee's guys again if you don't know paul dz go and check out his stream he's a really really awesome stylized artist and uh stuff is super clean so okay i was gonna i don't even know why i'm doing it this way my brain is all over the place so if you if you're confused by what i'm doing today i'm sorry ask questions and i'll try and like tell you how i normally do it because my brain isn't really working it's like i'm fried today I'm totally fried. I told you I oh, the reason why earlier too. So Forgiveness please. Oh yes. Okay, so it'll have like these big mandibles, right? This is what I think. You'll have these big mandibles and these things, so it's, it's not a typical, like, tick that does things that way. This thing will, will like, it'll, like, shave the skin <laughs> or something. It'll be, like, a lawnmower tick. Like a, a like, a arm hair mower tick. <laughs> hey, Leon, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being proud of me. I feel like anytime somebody's proud of me for doing something, I need to confuse their emotions somehow. So they're like, mm, I want to be proud of you, but like there, any kind of emotion I feel that anybody has towards me needs to have like that but and asterisk ne like next to it. And I think that's like the perfect. <laughs> yeah, so you know this girl, Ashley, but <laughs> would I touch it? No. No. Oh yeah, it'll be like a skin lawn mower. A skin mower. <gasps> That's its name, skin mower. It's a skin mower. Look, look at that. Is that not fun? That's fun. That's a fun silhouette, right? Tick butt? <laughs> I mean, yeah, he doesn't have a tick butt. He doesn't have a tick butt. Skin mower. How big is it? As big as the skin lets it be. <laughs> like, it's a tick for titans. Well done. Like, you can't stay mad at that, right? Like, you can't be like... Right, Jose? Like, you can't stay mad at... That was a- I feel like that was a really good Rick roll. If I was to make a model in ZBrush and then rig elsewhere, would it be for- would it be better for me to do the original model pose with limbs full extended? Um... I mean, yeah, you wouldn't want to have them like bent like this, right? Like you wouldn't- we wouldn't want to do something like that. You could do like a pose, so you wouldn't- you don't necessarily need to have your- your- arm straight to the side like T you could do a right so full extended like yes I mean um, with your hand you want it to be kind of natural right so if you were to do a hand 
suppose it, you could do something like this and you could rig it just fine. Some riggers though, especially very stylized projects where you're going to get things that are gonna be like super bendy, you're gonna want like full rigid straight straight. But if you're doing something more realistic, then go for something relaxed. I think that's the, that's the key. Um, think about what movements you're gonna have to go with when you're rigging it, essentially. Hey Global, I've been doing this um, for seven years. It's been a long time. Me and the ticks, man, just kicking it for seven years. <laughs> It's, it's my hobby. No, it's also my job. Um, <laughs> I, I actually work mostly stylized stuff. Uh, cartoons a lot of the time. And just stylized projects. Uh, or uh, TV and film. But there have been a couple of creature um, positions that I've gotten as well. And uh, this year has been insane for the um, for the work, which is which is crazy. And that's another thing. Like I was talking about this at the beginning of stream because uh, CT fan had asked me, um, and this is why I didn't want to come off as insensitive because I I can't put myself in the exact same shoes as as uh, some some of the uh, the concerns that are like coming with the pandemic because my experience as a freelance artist is that. It, you know and being visible online is that there's a lot of work and so if you want to kind of like tap into that i would recommend putting yourself online right now because a lot of studios are looking for um you know freelance artists these days like they they're 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 looking for people who are remote so even if somebody is all the way across the other side of the planet it doesn't matter as long as you can get your work done right so um, and the, the pandemic's kind of like spurred that change of the industry that people are okay with freelance a lot more now. So um, that's sort of been my experience with it. And, and that's why I don't want to be insensitive when it comes to giving advice on these kinds of things. Um, projects that I've worked for, I can tell you some of the earlier stuff that I was like actually in house for, but a lot of the stuff that I've been doing recently um, in the last like two years has been like highly NDA <laughs> and I can't talk about pretty much any of it because a lot of it it's never gonna see the light of day so um, the very first project that I ever worked on was on Barbie Starlight Adventure as a character artist that was pretty cool to be honest I'm not gonna lie I was very pleasantly surprised I remember when I first got that job I was like oh dang Barbie so lame but whatever I'm so happy to have a job but Barbie right but it ended up being like really cool so like I'm not I'm not even I'm not even mad um and then that transitioned to a couple of like in-house like R&D things which didn't really pan out and then I ended up going uh, to uh, Disney's Elena of Avalor and that was like a whole year that was that was quite the project <laughs> um, and then after that uh, I worked on like a feature like a kung fu pan like not kung fu panda it was like a kung fu cat feature I'm not really sure what it was called um, and then the studio went under and everybody got laid off and then I don't know if my my uh, director still in the chat <laughs> but that's who I was talking to earlier it had hired me for um, at tangent for uh, next gen which was a movie that came out on Netflix and that was really fun like really fun to work on uh, I still miss that whole team dude that was really great and then they they actually gave me uh, my kickstart in freelancing as well because they allowed me to work remote for the first time when I left Toronto to work in Montreal and then things turned into R&D stuff and I started doing a lot of R&D so that means like pitch work and things that uh, you know for projects 
that are not even announced yet, and I don't want to ruin NDAs and stuff, so I can't tell you everything. <laughs> Yes, a lot of art station jobs say work remotely because it's true. A lot of things are um, remote work now. Exactly, Shane. Yes, exactly. And but like the uh, the opportunities that I'm getting too. Like I want you all to be very aware of that. So when you when when you do go freelance, because it is it is how the industry is kind of changing. A lot of people are going to be work from home in the future, um, and even now, like you, you're getting a lot more and more and more. Be as professional as you possibly can. When you're a freelance artist, I can't stress enough of setting yourself a schedule. And if your client works at a certain time every single day try and be within those hours so that you can answer their emails at a timely manner and things like that because if you do that they're more likely to keep working with you in the future right so that's sort of like you know that that's that's really what because this is gonna this is gonna sound so bad but the one feedback that i get a lot from a lot of the directors and a lot of the uh uh, producers even that I've worked with the, the art directors like you know remotely I'm talking about is they they say like wow we're really happy with your professionalism and you respond very quickly and it's something that we don't see a lot from freelancers and I'm like that's not okay like if you guys are freelancing you got to be on your ball you know because you're your own boss so um that's that's my big tip is you want to impress literally just do the bare minimum and respond on time and be on time <laughs> you're never going freelance you're going very very expensive lance nice there you go that's how you treat yourself baubles <laughs> yeah shane it's like it's ridiculous isn't it like I actually didn't expect that to be such a problem. I figured that everybody would try to be as professional as possible when being a freelance artist. So if you are a freelance artist or you're looking to be a freelance artist, literally just respond on time and be on 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 time, like, you know, set yourself a schedule and check your emails, like, you know, every day at certain times, making sure that you get back to people on time. Uh, a detail. Yes, I do sometimes, but not for sculpting. Sorry, I will work now. Oh, these should have like barbs on them, shouldn't they? Like barbs. How do I do Dynafesh fingers without them attaching to each other? I think so. I. Hmm. So. Sorry. So, um. This new version of ZBrush that just came out, if you haven't updated, definitely update. There's a. a, a an option for Dynamesh that you might want to play around with and it will look at like the different resolutions of different meshes based on um, based on your single tool when you're Dynameshing and it's supposed to kind of help with that I haven't really played with it though so look at the documentation for it and check if that solves your issue um, but legacy wise uh, talking about that usually what I do is I will make sure that my fingers for my hands are all looking um, proper in a low res in a default pose first and then I will dynamesh them together if uh, you know, and then it'll have enough space and then I'll pose them. However, if for whatever reason I need more topology in the hand re region, what I'll end up doing is um, union, uh, remesh by union, which is right here. So if you go into your gizmo, there's a little gear icon. And if you click that, you get a whole bunch of deformers, like a deformer list. And this remesh by union, what it does is it'll take to like you know whatever geometry is intersecting 
um, another piece of geometry in a single tool and it'll remesh that area. So if you had like a finger here and it's doing this, it'll remesh where these two are touching so that they are remeshed, but it won't like dynamesh or ruin anything. And then you could actually use Sculptress Pro and just kind of like dab on a little bit of extra topology if you need it in those sections. That's usually how I end up working around that if I've already got something in like a crazy pose like this and I don't want it to all dynamesh together, right? So I'll, I'll usually end up doing something like that. Hopefully that answers your question. Mm. Right. Yummy. Tick barbs. Anthropomorphic model, animal bent legs, werewolf. She fully extend the legs. Um, you don't need to fully extend the legs. Think about something that's more natural. If you need that werewolf to act more like a rubber hose character, like um, like you know, old Disney or whatever. You know, maybe even just just very stylized. Then I would consider extending it further, just because the straighter you get, the better for something like rubber hosey and smear based and whatever. But if you're doing something more realistic, like I said, like keep it natural, right? So, what is the natural standing position for that? And don't extend it further. I want these to be like super needles. Yeah, you have a question? Again, like, I, I'm sorry, um, there's a lot of questions coming in and please do keep asking questions, but I have to balance doing some work and then also answering things, so don't be impatient with me. Please. Thank you. Uh, Draconis Lupus, I'm wanting to take a class and get into the game industry for game art creation. Do you have any experience or information that would be useful? Um, taking classes. So I think that the best thing that I could tell you is that it, what, whatever class that you find that you want to take, you should double check it with this um, website called The Rookies. Um, and I don't know if you guys know about this resource. I found out about it recently. Uh, I, I knew about The Rookies. I didn't know that they had a school, like a verified school searching system. Um, because there's a lot of like really shady schools out there and you can get kind of like 
pawned into paying way more for basically nothing and no knowledge gained and whatever so you know if you want to make sure that the course that you're going to be taking is solid go to the rookies r-o-o-k-i-e-s right and check them out um uh, check out their their school listing actually let me see if i can find the link for you and also just keep in mind too that um anytime that you're doing a course of any kind be it with a school or your your favorite artists a lot of it you know will come down to how much you're willing to put into um learning uh hold on let me see Sorry, let me try and find it. I know that I linked it somewhere in Discord. Um, ah, there, yeah, there it is. Certified schools. Here's this. And, uh, and this. This can be helpful, I think. Um, and if you don't want to go through, you know, like a full, you know, course with school and everything, maybe like that's like out of your budget and stuff, which is totally understandable. Um, you know, not everybody wants to go in debt. <laughs> if you want to do something more with like, you know, one of your favorite artists that you find on Gumroad or something like that. Um, keep in mind those ones specifically will require you to be on your best and doing a lot of extracurricular so you got to be doing you got to be super serious about it and asking the right questions learn how to google that's a big one if you have a question learn exactly what it is about that question like what 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 do you need to look up try and answer a lot of your questions with google and then you'll get like very specific and useful responses from your mentor that you that you choose um, Shane Olson has a really good course as well if you like stylized stuff. He's in, in chat, I think, I don't know, he might have, uh, he might have gone to sleep or, or whatever, but he was here recently. Hmm. Buying alphas for different clothing types for use with Spotlight. Where can you buy clothing alphas besides the... I don't... Buying clothing alphas? See, that's something that I don't really do. Um, I know that people use XYZ for a various... Like, a whole bunch of different things. People use Quixel a lot. Like, the Mega Suite, the Mega Scans and stuff, so... Um, but like ZBrush based alphas for clothing, there's like a lot of different things like you could even do with, um, I know this is not really answering your question, but I don't really have resources to give you for that because that's not really like what I do. If I'm going to do anything clothing based, I usually will do it like, um, you know, in substance painter or something like that. But, um, uh, in, um, geometry in let's see what, what am i talking about right now dynamic subdiv right and then here this so if you go into dyna here hold on i know i'm very annoying right now so dynamic subdiv right that means that you're adding um not real subdivisions you're just like previewing them in a sense right it hasn't applied it to the mesh so if you turn micro poly on you get a whole bunch of different options so you could do like chain mill or you know big thick chunky sweater cotton and things like that like here's a knit right and then if you were to increase the smoothness you get like a actual knitting that happens right so if you have um you know you have like uh, uh, like a sweater that you've already sculpted then z remesh it uh reproject the details and things like that and then maybe try using some of this stuff and you can get some nice uh clothing as well and you can make your own version of this as well um like here's some denim right so you could do that with jeans you can change the thickness of this a whole bunch of different things so uh micro poly is really good for clothing texture and things like that you want like rips and tears um 
honestly like that's not i don't really like go out and buy that kind of stuff zbrush has like a alpha uh, repository like you can get a lot of free ones just from like the zbrush website Is mine a good Discord to start? My Discord is like, we're, we're really chill in my Discord. It's not like hyperactive or anything. I'm sure if like a ton of people joined it, you guys would keep it active. <laughs> but like, I, I get busy, so like I'm not answering everything personally. <laughs> yeah, Shane. Yeah, join, join Shane's course. <laughs> All right, I, I'm gonna, uh, I'm all over the place. I'm so sorry. Sorry. This is why I like the uh, the artifacting because it gives like some really cool stuff once you dynamesh, you see this? Like all of this pulling stuff and then I use this as, um, I use this as a base for sculpting details. Make a plane, flatten plane and ZBrush and just subdivide it in shade and cut out your alpha shape with your own fiddle. That's a good, that's actually a very good workflow, Liz. Yeah, that's actually a very good workflow. Good idea. Search for alphas on Google, Pinterest. Yeah, that too. Exactly, Jose. Like, I don't, I don't go out and specifically buy alphas. So I wouldn't be able to tell you which ones to buy. Hi, Talden. How are you doing? Courses that specialize in environment modeling. I don't know, do you guys know any um, really good environment modeling courses? Like I don't like I don't take a bunch of courses, right? So it's like it's hard for me. I, I should make like a list because I get this question a lot. I should make like a list of people's courses on like a Google Docs or something. That's what I think I should do at this point. Oh man. Thank you, Fikri. Yeah, mediums are great. It would be pretty good, right? Maybe I'll think about doing that um, next week or something. I can't this week. I'm really like freaking tied up and ah, oh, so much work. Not a bad thing. Because I think, I think the thing is, like, a lot of people maybe, um, I, I'm just, I'm trying to think of the reason why, you know, a list like that doesn't exist yet, and I think it's just because people are afraid that it, it'll take away from people, um, going to their specific course, but I think it will just give everyone the options that they need to find the course that's right for them, because if, even if you have, like, let's say, like, three environment courses next to each other. Each one will be different in its own right, and each teacher is different, so I think it's good to have like a list. I don't know. I'll think about making something or asking for help on that. Cause I, I don't I don't have any courses myself, so Alright, see you ghosts. Have a nice dreamland. <laughs> What did I do when I started? Did I take courses? No, actually, and that's why it's like so hard for me to be like, guys, this is what you should watch. <laughs> um, when I started, like the first thing that I did was I just kind of got dirty with ZBrush. I know that sounds stupid, but I did. Like I literally just kind of like did stuff in it until something kind of happened. Um, and then I was like, oh, well, I, you know, my partner, while we were in school, we were in school for animation, so not learning how to do ZBrush or anything like that, but my partner was taking a course from somebody who was at Ubisoft at the time, and uh, and he was learning that way, and I was like, ooh, character art, me too! And so then I started Googling how to do that, and I found out what Polycount was, and they had a wiki at that time that I was just going off of to learn everything. So yeah, like it was a lot of like Googling and stuff like that. It wasn't any particular course, I can't say. It was just like a lot of like YouTube like 
short tutorials, maybe 10 minutes at a time, like how to do specific things. Um, yeah. <laughs> I have not taken Shane's course, but I've seen um, a lot of the people that have been coming out of it have really, really solid character fundamentals. So I, that's why I vouch for it, because like I, I know that he's really good at breaking things down and explaining how to think of things in a very, very simplistic way. Um... Oh, you want my Discord? Okay, I- okay, I'm gonna- I'm gonna keep working after I give you guys this link. Oh, no, that's the rookie. Sorry, bad. I didn't copy the right thing. Sorry. My bad. Here. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, what's your standard pipelines for the end result, like in your art station? Standard pipelines for the end result. Okay, so um, essentially I'll just do a uh, sketch, like, you know, what I, what I showed you. And then I'll throw that sketch over, like I'll pose it, and then I'll throw it to Keyshot and do um, a handful, like five to ten different material passes on it. And I go over to Photoshop and I'll kind of do a quick composite and get a generalization of base materials from those material passes that I like. And then I'll paint over top of it as well. Um, you know, little nicks and gritty details and things like that. Um, and adding any like dirt or you know maybe I want to you know fix the silhouette here and there or whatever remove certain things add certain things maybe I want saliva that I didn't put before so then I'll paint it so we're gonna storm the discord oh no wait let's oh <laughs> There's so many of you, what the heck? Oh my god. <laughs> it is, it's a dump, man. It's a dump. Okay, listen, I need to I need to talk about the reason why it's called oh no, you guys <laughs> The reason why it's called the dump. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> oh jeez, okay. Behave yourselves. <laughs> okay, so the reason why it's called the dump is because of the analogy that I used at the beginning of this stream, which is like a trash fire, right? Um, all your work leading up to that good piece that you're gonna do is complete and absolute garbage. And so when you're in this Discord, you're just reminiscing or uh, what is what's the word with you're lamenting with everyone else right like you're just look at all my crap critique my crap or look at my crap until it's actually good and then you know so it's just keep doing garbage until it's good <laughs> that's how i view my art too is just like trash 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 oh hey <laughs> It's been pretty inactive in there, so you guys, you guys, uh, you guys have fun. <laughs> Everybody, like all the OGs are gonna be like, yo, what the hell just happened? <laughs> it's been so quiet. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, uh, finally able to catch live stream love work and learn so much from you oh thank you i'm glad that they can help um and if like i said at the beginning as well again if you know 
what I'm offering is not helpful to you, don't don't hang around then. Like there's lots of other artists you should check out to make sure that you find the right place, the right person for you to teach you. A cube states my name, bro. <laughs> Use my name. Uh, what program am I using? This is this is the Pixelogic. This is the pic. This is the Pixelogic channel. So it's the ZBrush. Okay. Oh my god, the Discord's on fire right now. What the hell are you guys doing? Uh, I'm so glad I muted it though. Oh my gosh. So many of you. Greg. Okay. Um, for everybody who did just join the Discord though, definitely check out the... Uh, check out the, um, the facts section so you know where to post everything. Otherwise, the mods will be on your butt, but... <laughs> Monty's the real one. He is, man. Monty's, Mon this is basically Monty's Discord. Actually, I don't think I'm gonna do any eyeballs on this. Not a feet on the tick. You know what? I'm glad you always keep me up to the industry standard. Always have to keep me up to industry standard. Right? There we go. Good. For Monster Hunter, not Dark Souls? Oh my god. Oh my god. Bruh. I think I want to do more of this, whatever I'm doing here. It's disgusting. Let's do more of that. Keep sculpting disgusting things. Absolutely. You didn't have to tell me twice. See you, Shane. Oh my god! What, <laughs> what are you doing in the Discord? Oh! Put you guys on timeout. What is... Try and like focus on actually like sculpting something here because so far this is we're an hour and a half in and we have a ball. <laughs> no, you love it, chicken. The best thing you've ever seen, isn't it?
Okay, yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. And then I'll give it like a really big, robust, pro, 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 I can never say it. It starts with a P. You know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about? Like the long thing that sucks stuff, the pro, prosbus, pro, 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 you know what I'm talking about, right? It starts with a P. Pixelogic dog mom. No! Is that what I'm known as? Oh no. Feels bad, man. Pro Probusis. Probus. Probus. I can't say it. Probuscit. Probus. You know, yeah, you you know what it, you know what it is that I'm trying to say. Pack em. <laughs> Pro Probiscus. Probiscus? Is that how you say it? Is that really how you say it? Probis probiscus. Probiscus! Probiscus! We did it! Thank you. Probiscus. 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 Biscuit. <laughs> tube mo tube mouth. Tube sucky thing goes slurp slurp. The straw, yes, that is the uh, the name, the scientific name. To split that. Don't ruin the beautiful feet. Hey, humans. trunk like the elephants no it's um it's the skin the skin mower because of its skin mowing <laughs> the feet are industry fan standard feet it's uh I want to make this thing hang down more. Kind of good to like think mask this off so that the actual flesh of the sack, the skin sack, can like hang over top of it. Let's kind of push the skin sack down out with gravity. Hmm. 
You lower the intensity on standard and then bigger strokes. Hang over top. Lead it. Jackal, how you doing? It is definitely, definitely a tick. Getting this. Does it look like a spoon? I guess it could be a spoon. Do I take I take inspiration from macro photography mostly. That's the stuff that I'm looking at the most, if I'm if I'm being honest. I plan to retop. No. Uh. I thought I was going to sneeze. If Mega Man was a bed bug, no. <laughs> it, oh, I was just making the model in industry standard model, you know? It has to have teeth if it's considered um, industry standard. Disable the L key? Why do you keep pressing the L key? What are you doing with the L key? How, that's so far on your keyboard. What are you doing? How do you keep pressing the L key? But you could just like make the L key, like you could just reassign open light box to something else because you can, you can change your hotkeys in ZBrush for everything. But like, how are you clicking? The- don't get it. <laughs> but yeah, you can change the hotkeys for it. It's like you can change hotkeys for everything. What's this model? It's like a tick. It's a tick. It's an alien tick. I don't know. 
You know. To Metroid. Ah, yeah. Much. No, it's an industry standard, but. It's the comma key that- How are you pressing the comma key? What are you doing? What are you doing over there? What are you doing? With the comma key, what are you doing? Get away from that side of the keyboard, what are you doing? <laughs> Par- Parsh- Uh, par- Parsage- um, Parset- Sorry, Parse, how are you doing? A lovely eye for detail. Honestly, it's just a matter of scribbling on top of your model. As long as you have strong shapes, you can scribble on it and then it looks detailed. That's my whole shtick. Literally all it is. <laughs> um, I'm gonna actually, I think, get a couple of pictures to look at because I wasn't looking at it. Now I'm just gonna make myself disgusted. I'm gonna make myself really disgusted, actually. I hate it. I'm not gonna put this on stream, it's disgusting. I'm gonna sculpt it instead. Less disgusting. Much less. You use key combos to get brushes, like move, so B and V. M is right beside comic key. Oh. Why do you do that? <laughs> Why are you this way? <laughs> okay, this thing needs to be way more engorged is what. Way bigger. Don't be afraid. Grab it. The mega tick. Why are the feet there? Um, prosperity. Go 
Dick. Oh no, wait, that means they didn't golf to the feet. <laughs> Better. There we go. Safe. Actually, this kind of works to our um, advantage because it could be like stretchy bits. Like have it like be like, stretching skin, kind of. Kind of meshes, it'll look really cool. Yeah, you have to protect the feet, otherwise it stops being, um... Stops being viable for an industry standard model, right? Such a shame, there was so many- there were so many sculpts that I did this year that just- They weren't up to bat because I just didn't glued the feet, you know? Bad. Bad habits. My dog used to have ticks, can't confirm the big ones have very stretchy abdomens. Yeah, they're nasty. Il hey, Ilgarn, how are you doing? Protopotty. <laughs> Disgusting, yes, I know. You gotta do a gross centipede thing for this month and you weren't really feeling it. This helps. You're welcome. You're welcome. That's what I'm here for. Making everybody feel disgusted. Like, I need more of like, these bulbous like things. Like this stuff. This stuff sucks so bad. I'm doing all right. A little, uh, I'm a little slow today, but otherwise pretty good on, um, since I started streaming. Good, bulbous, very bulbous, good. What's the phobia of holes? Uh, trypophobia? You can do some of that, actually. That would be good. You need to have like some of them like really clustered close together. Please, yes. gonna it's gonna um close together it's an it's some poor porous you know porous good and porous right here
What was the way to go for the creature creature designer? Do you just solely focus on the creature itself? Um So, okay, so when you're doing creature design, it really I, I guess what you're asking is like where do you start? Is that Is that it? Because like yeah, it just, it just kind of depends like what's your prompt do you have a prompt if you don't have a prompt you can always just start with like silhouette gesture and stuff like that kind of like how i do it which is just look for some shapes and go from there um but uh if, if you have something very specific in mind then you're gonna want to look up references for that very specific thing and then you can um work on integrating certain parts that make sense logically um into that design but first and foremost you should be looking at like overall silhouette i think a lot of uh unless you're doing something like hyper realistic like you want like a really realistic looking like creature like something but you know what even still you're working on like silhouette and things like that so like first and foremost like make 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 the silhouette read really well look at you know I, I, I personally believe in looks over function first and then you could always make the looks function later you know what I mean like you make it look cool first then figure it out afterwards like that's that's how I've been doing things because then you don't miss out on any of the cool design choices that you can make another phobia <laughs> do I have educate formal education for 3d not really no um, I went to college for um, 2D animation. There were like a couple of like, like I remember I did like a lighting course and a rigging course, but it was like, it was like really preliminary stuff in Maya. And so most of like the 3D stuff that I did, like all the modeling and things like that, like it was all, um, it was all on my own time. Any course about creatures, animal net? No, I, I don't actually have like a bunch of stuff that I can just kind of give for that. Um, I have my own references and things like that. Like the 3D, 3D Total sells these really cool A crochets, right? Yeah. This is like super, super nice. Good horse. <laughs> They're expensive, but they're really nice. I've got a cat one and a dog one. Um, but in terms of like a course for that, I don't have any recommendations. I'm really sorry. But you can check out the rookies for um, different schools. I mean, if you're looking for very like short term courses, though, like like a Gumroad thing, I don't have anything. To do. How many years does it take to do good modeling? That really depends. How much time are you spending during those, um, during during your years that you're learning it, right? You spend every single day for a year, you'll be awesome. If you spend an hour every week for a year, maybe not, right? It's hard for me to tell you exactly how long it'll take. It really depends on, on the person. Hey, Tuarda. Thank you. Hmm. Let's get... Let's, let's make you guys really upset with me. I think I want to make you guys really, really angry. Kind of the mood that I'm in. What's with the feet? Industry standard. Your cat is intrigued by the bug. No! Be wary. It is a tick. 
Cats are susceptible. Scale reference? No, 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 wait. If it's scale reference, hold on. Yes, that's how big it is. See, I don't find the bigger, the scarier. I find it if it's like uncanny, like it's in that uncanny, like largeness, you know? Like if you saw like, if you saw a spider that's the size of a skyscraper, like sure that's scary because it's a big thing that's just walking around with many legs. However, if you saw a spider, like a tarantula gets this big, but if you saw a tarantula that was like this big, like a dinner plate, there's like, your brain can't quite comprehend the level of like that sort of size I find. Like that's what really freaks me out is when it's just like, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That isn't like, that isn't like monster big where I can accept it. And it's not what like the size it should be. It's in dinner plate size. I don't like it. <laughs> dinner plate sized bugs are bad news, man. That's that. I don't like that. I don't like, I don't like that. Cause it's like, you think about it, right? That's like the size, a dinner plate sized bug is the size that it could still like suck your blood and stuff, but it could also like kill you. You know what I mean? Whereas like if it's the like size of a building or something like that, then it's just gonna step on you. So it's not really like the same sort of fear as like if it's a dinner plate sized bug. Yeah, exactly, Chard. I don't like I don't like I don't like the no. It's a mistake, man. <laughs> so I find like ancient bugs terrifying because like the oxygen Levels of Earth were so much higher, so it made everything so much bigger. Dude, bugs were huge! Huge! Dino bugs, man! Bad news. My PC properties? Um, I'll just tell you, I'm using a... Um, I'm using 64 gigs of RAM, I have a Ryzen 9 processor and I have a 2070 CPU. I think it's better to go to school or learn by yourself. Well, my bias is by myself because I went to school for um, 2D animation and I learned most of my 3D on my own and on the job. So it's like, I'm in like a weird spot where it's hard for me to give non-biased advice that way. Um, Cause I'm not even really using my animation degree, right? So it's like weird for me to even say like, yeah, school, woo. But it worked out for like a lot of people too, right? So I would just say that it depends on the person.
See, you think these are eyes. These are not eyes. These are not eyeballs. Doesn't have eyeballs. Doesn't do that. It doesn't do eyes. Yes, exactly. It's tick pimples. My two sentence tutorial on Instagram. Wait, oh. <laughs> Your anatomy sucks, nature. <laughs> oh, but it's true. Doing graphic design and social media content? Yeah, I mean, like, life leads you in different paths, right? So, whatever. <laughs> yeah, holding control and then dragging with the gizmo tool will duplicate within your sub tool. It is, it's very nice. So, if I grab one of these, which if you have the gizmo on, right? And then you hold control and click on uh, one of your, like, these are all different poly groups, right? You hold control while the gizmo is active. You can actually just go ahead and click on and it'll, it'll mask off that uh, specific poly group for you with the gizmo active. So with the gizmo also active, you hold control and then you drag. You're going to get it to duplicate from that spot and you can kind of keep doing that. That's, that's what I do instead of just making a new sub tool. I just control and drag and just mess up my file like crazy. Nightmares with the crease? No, honestly, no, I don't get like I don't have any creature nightmares or anything to do with that. <laughs> hey, Sergio, how are you doing? I'm good. Oh, were you not duplicating things, Jackal? Yeah, it's really, really easy. Makes it a lot faster. When I use external render, it kicks you out of live boolean. Hmm, that's weird. Um. I think, I think if, d does the boolean carry over? Cause usually before I send my um, sculpt over to Keyshot, I usually just make sure, like make the boolean mesh before I send it over. I am using a Cintiq 22 HD. Hey Jakebot. Yeah, I'm gonna take a break um, before we continue with this monstrosity. And, um... I haven't saved this at all. Okay. Put the BRB up. Eee. All right, I'm gonna BRB and uh, in like anywhere between three to five minutes, and then I'll show you Monty, and then I'll keep sculpting for the rest of the two hours. E. Okay, get up and stretch. You don't want blood clots and stuff. BRB.
Friedrich, how are you? Hi! This is Monty. Everybody knew this is Monty, my boyo. My emotional support dog. <laughs> my, uh, my potato sack that has a consciousness. He's a potato sack with a soul. When I'm anxious, he just a good weight. You know how like, you know like how if you're really anxious, it feels good to have like a weighted blanket or something. That's Monty for me. Just does this. The boy. The boy. <laughs> How old is he? He's, uh, he's three. Three! He's gonna be four in, um, October. Any Monty anxieties? Oh, yeah, we have pigeons on the porch now. Because they're, it's springtime, so they're looking for, um, they're, they're looking for, uh, places to nest. Sorry, I just like, I don't want to scream in his ears. Um, they're looking for places to rest, so... He sees the pigeons and he just completely freaks out at them, like... And then he'll be anxious the rest of the day, because like, it's not like a normal like, fork fork, you know, like a normal dog goes, like his, like, hackles go straight up, like hackles, like, the fur on the back of his neck, like it goes whoosh, like straight up, like you would think he's a porcupine. <laughs> he's, he hates the pigeons so bad. Like, oh god! Foreign entity, foreign entity! <laughs> no, uh, how are I have my own personal channel as well. I have it listed. Yes. Yes, I do. Right here. He sits every time you go to pick him up. He knows it's coming each time. Dude, yeah, sometimes he even sits pretty for me. He's just like, I'm ready. Sometimes he even just jumps into my arms, depending on like how excited he is that day. He'll just jump, jump right into my leg, like, arms. Oh yeah, he, he, he loves cuddle time. Like anytime I pick him up, he just goes into full like, yes, attention. I am potato sack now. He's, he's, he's like really good at being like an, uh, an emotional support dog. Like if I'm like freaking out and having a panic attack, this, he just... <laughs> he's a very good boy. And I didn't even have to like, I don't, I didn't train him to do this or anything. This is just him. He likes doing this since he was like a puppy. He's just been really like chill. Just loves cuddles. He's like a fucking suck. He's seven. Brooklyn, fourteen out of ten. Absolute fourteen out of ten. I agree. She's, she's a. I don't even know her. She's a fourteen out of ten. <laughs> okay, put you on the ground now. Yes. And then it goes right under my feet. <laughs> Not my arms, it's my feet. I know. We dogs are too good for us. If I didn't have my if I didn't have Monty while freelancing, I would probably be actually insane by now. Are you sure you don't actually have a porcupine? Some days I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Hey Bavin. Great. Positive vibe technicians, yes. 
Yeah, he helps. He helps me a lot. Freelancing counselor. Perfect. time freelance or do you also do term contracts for industry um so yeah it's like it, it sometimes like so right now i'm on a part-time retainer um for one studio and i was just coming off of a retainer for another studio and so it's it's one of those things where because i'm doing like sculpt work it can be part-time um, if it were more like full production, it would probably have to be like, okay, like you'd have to like, it just comes down to like talking to the client and seeing what their needs are and then mentioning upfront what your availability is. Because a lot of the time it's kind of like puzzle pieces fitting in work where it, you can fit it. Um, so like a lot of the time I'll get like uh, little tiny contracts here and there and then that's perfect to fit in in between and sprinkle with my um, part-time retainers or whatever that ends up being a thing but a lot of the time like I only really like I don't usually do full-time retainers just because of the amount of requests and a lot of the time too um, I usually have a lot of my own stuff that I have like I, I, I appreciate my own time as well so it's it's one of those weird things where it's like I'll take a hit for money just so that I have some time in between like contracts to just relax but yeah it is it, it, it all comes down to communication all of it like you just tell them like hey like I am on this part-time retainer like I can't I can't do full-time right now um, there's an ability to do full-time but you have to wait five months or whatever it is right so I'm sure there's gonna be a time where I just like don't have any work at all like at all like nothing's coming in I know when I first started freelancing, like, work was sparse, like, it would come, um, in, in waves. Now it's sort of like this kind of, like, consistent, like, at least something every month type deal. But that comes from being, like, visible online, though. Posting your stuff. Also... Post stuff to LinkedIn. I know it sounds weird, but post your art to LinkedIn. I, I, I've, I've met a lot of like really interesting people, um, potential clients and stuff, just from recently starting to post my stuff on LinkedIn. I never really uh, like thought to do that for whatever reason. I was like, ah, whatever, I never use LinkedIn. Post your stuff to LinkedIn. <laughs> Aaron Horky, that rings a bell. Ooh, Aaron Horky.
Yeah, that, that, I don't know who. Recommended to model with real measurements, or does it not matter if the scale is? Um, depends on what you're doing. It really does. Uh, a lot of the time in even like stylized productions, um, you know, a lot of people will start to like just be like model things. Like we'll all just start modeling things, and then it'll get to where lighting is doing things, and lighting is just like, hey, bro, the SSS is not. It's not working properly at this scale. We need this to be real world scale so that the SSS works. Because a lot of the time, you know, lighting is dependent on real world scale. Um, but when you're doing like concept sketching and stuff like this, like I don't care, like, you know, when you're in ZBrush doing stuff like this, it scale really doesn't matter. Like you can always adjust that later. Unless you're really bringing like a low res from another program in and you know, doing stuff to it and then got to go back then you got to maintain the, the the scale but otherwise it doesn't it doesn't matter you can always adjust that later It does make sense. As a freelancer, we should treat ourselves as professionals, no? Yes, absolutely. I just never really thought to, like... I never thought of LinkedIn as, like, an art-friendly place, but, like, it, it... Our industry exists on LinkedIn just like it, you know, every other, every other industry does, so... Yeah, like I think I think it's really expanded a lot because I remember just a couple of years ago I didn't ever see any 3D stuff on LinkedIn, but like what's your stuff on LinkedIn? And you know, you can even think about it this way, right? Um, if you think about how people treat uh, different links, right? A lot of the time, like, you know, if you were to tell somebody on social media, hey, here's my art station, and you have the picture of it, like, on Twitter or something, you say, hey, here's my art station, you post the link of the art station. The majority of people, and I know this because, you know, you, you have the statistics, you have the analysis there, the majority of people won't click the link. They, they won't go and look at that stuff. So, if, you know, if you think about LinkedIn the same way, nobody's... Like, most people are not going to actively look and search for your portfolio or look to find your art station. So, like, if you're, like, posting your work so that other people can see it on your LinkedIn when they click on your page, then it's, like, like, on your activity or whatever, then it's, like, hmm? You're in their, their, you're in their face. It's good. The less clicks, the better, right? Like... The only thing you don't like about LinkedIn is that it became like Facebook. You just have to be careful what you put there. Oh, yeah. Like some people treat it like that. Yeah. I'm not, I don't browse it too frequently, but I do post there and I, I see what other like colleagues are up to sometimes, but I don't like hang out too much on there. I know there, there are recruiters though that like that's their job is just a LinkedIn recruiter. You, they just sit on LinkedIn all day looking at posts, right? So... You post some cool artwork in the middle of the day. There's LinkedIn recruiters just hanging out. They're just hanging out being like, bro, my job is scrolling through this pseudo-Facebook site. Oh my gosh, what is this cool bug? Click. <laughs> What do you think about Fiverr, Upwork, Freelancer, those kinds of pages? Are they worth the time? I think they're not. I think they're dumb. Like, I think that that's... Okay, I shouldn't I shouldn't 100% say that. Like, I'm coming from a very biased point of view. I need to, like, establish that, right? Like, 
I have work, and so I will advocate always for people to be charging what they're worth, charging their hourly that they're worth. When you're like putting yourself on Fiverr, a lot of people who are putting themselves on Fiverr don't know how to price themselves, and you end up doing a lot more work than what you're actually worth in the end. Um, and so like, is it really worth your time for pennies to be doing this for other people, you know, like selling yourself for, for like, like really under, like lowballing yourself on Fiverr or something like that? Or would you be better off spending your time, you know, trying to get better at what you do rather than doing things for other people at like for pennies, just trying to get better at what you do and then you know, finding a better paying job. Like, that's that's my thought process behind it. And I understand that, like, you know, some people are like, oh, I'm, like, desperate, I'm desperate. I don't think that, like, the art industry should have people super desperate for money. Like, you know, like, if you can get another job, do that. You're gonna end up hating what you do if you're so desperate for work, you know? As an artist, like, you... If you can find another avenue so that you can use art as like a hobby until it can become financially stable, then I feel like that would be the better route, in my opinion, because you're not going to burn yourself out the same way. Yes, a Cintiq 22 HD. What stand do you use to have it on the angle like that? Um, I'm using a thing from like an arm. It's like the ergo ergonomic, the ergotron, ergotron, but it's like the cheap Amazon version, which does the exact same thing. So you can save money and get the cheap Amazon version of the ergotron, <laughs> which does the exact same thing. Yeah, Ori got it. Um, one thing I need to get you to understand though about the Cintiq, you have to make sure, you have to be very, very good about your posture when using the Cintiq, otherwise you can severely hurt your shoulder. And I'm, I'm being really serious about this. Um, it's something that creeps up on you and you don't actually know that it's happening i had four to five months of intense pain and issues that i had to go to physiotherapy for with my with my shoulder um part of it was because of my working habits so the ideal you can see me working like this a lot the ideal is that i'm like straight right and you want your arm to be resting on like a table or something where you're not putting a whole bunch of muscular um, pressure on any part of your arm. You want it to be as relaxed as possible because uh, working like this, it's not, it's not super, super ergonomic. The Cintiq has never really been super ergonomic. If you want a really ergonomic option, you're gonna be working on your desk looking straight at your monitor. But the Cintiq, uh, comes with challenges with uh, ergonomics, so you have to be very good about taking your breaks and very good about your posture. So make sure that your your arm is supported. Always support your arm. Don't work like this. Don't do this hunchback stuff. It will catch up to you. Try and sit straight, right? And like look direct. Like that's that's the biggest thing that I can I can say is make sure that your your arms are back. You know, your shoulders aren't rounded forward or anything and try to work like that, okay? Because it's gonna really hurt you in the long run if you don't. You were just on No Man's Stream and Alex mentioned a cool company called Cintweak that deals with accessories. Oh, neat. Keyboard on top of your Cintiq, that's what they do? Oh, 
got you. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I don't... I actually don't understand that. The Cintiq on the top, or the keyboard on the top. I wouldn't know. I, I need to have mine behind. I like that behind, because then I can keep my shoulders back. Uh, Javier, I try to take a break every one to two hours for at least like 15 minutes. Um, I do a lot of stretching and, uh, and I, you know, give Mr. Magoo his like W's, little jounts. Um, but overall, like, it's in, it, my whole day revolves around the PC, and that's why I'm like, I'm very like, like serious about your posture and your your sitting health like sitting for more than two hours at a time it's not good for you it really isn't good for you not i want to get back into sculpting in vr actually um i haven't been because of uh because of my arm but my arms almost, like it's a it's like 95 percent there you know like it still hurts sometimes but it's like 95% there, so I feel like I can get back into it. Okay, I think I'm gonna actually save this thing and actually dynamite. I send them to Keyshot using the ZBrush to Keyshot bridge, Eddie. Unsure, um, game dev disciples know about XP pen. I'm sure that like if it has the same sort of backing that the Cintiq does, or like. If the XP pen has the same backing as a lot of uh, monitors do, then you could use like a, a monitor arm for it potentially. All right, I'll see you, Alex. Thanks for hanging. Um. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice and chunky. Very dynamic. It's too much. Um, both. Make both. Does Dynamesh just mean more and more geometry? Yeah, it's like taking um, the details that you've made, trying to preserve that while adding more geometry, and, uh, and kind of like unifying everything. <clears throat> Dyna as in like dynamic mesh.
of Spore. Oh my god. This is like some synthwave stuff from uh, Pretzel Rocks. <laughs> Spore. The Sims, but for weirdos. Okay. Civ, but for weird. Actually, I don't even know how to categorize Spore. This is more like Civ. Sort of. Oh, thank you, Sergio! I appreciate it. The Sims is for weird. Okay, fair, fair. I did my fair share of things that I don't want to repeat with The Sims. <laughs> a god game genre. But you could argue that every game is a god game genre. Oh. We've been god the whole time. Whoa. Sims is basically th simplified 3D modeling, if you think. Yeah, so is Minecraft. <laughs> Minecraft is Legos. Legos is IRL 3D modeling. Oh. Man, I've been kit bashing since I was three years old. I've been kit bashing since I was in diapers and poo pooing. What have you been doing? <laughs> All right, let's get serious with the detail here. Want to do something a little bit better? But, aha, that's good. Wow, ticks actually have like this weird fingerprint sort of thing going on on their uh, on their bodies. That's really cool. Been a long time since I kit bashed that. <laughs> what creature is this? It's like an alien tick. I don't know. Some kind of an alien tick. Um, all right. Actually, maybe I don't want, I don't want lazy. I'm gonna do this live. Dynamic next to brush size means um, so like basically it means like you see how I'm zooming in and zooming out right now It means that my brush will always stay the same size Regardless of like how close to the model I am It will always be the same stroke size whereas if I were to click on dynamic Right if I took dynamic off and I had it at 161 here and then I zoomed in then it would react like this instead Right? So it, it isn't the same size constantly. 
So if you wanted your brush size to be the same, um, sorry, that wasn't a good example. So here versus if I were to zoom in, now it's tiny there. That's what dynamic does. So dynamic keeps it the same, whereas like this, it's not dynamically changing to be the same brush size, depending on where you're zooming into. See if I've got any uh, fingerprints. Really, that could work really good. These are all things that you can get from the ZBrush Alpha repository, by the way. Um, I think this could work really good. Let me get my standard brush. Scan. Like, click it a billion times and then it shows up a billion times. Turn that down. Your main freelance, uh, who would you say are my main freelance? Oh, um, definitely like kids TV shows and, um, kids movies and things like that, like cartoons, um, stylized stuff, like anything in that realm. I, I get a lot of work based on that. But um, recently there's been more interest outside of that as well, but that's definitely been what it started as. No worries, Ryan. Thanks for hanging out.
tick. Back area. <laughs> no, I, I I typically like to do creatures and monsters on my own time. Um, there's just like a lot more work when it comes to uh, cartoons and stylized stuff, but you know, I, like I said, like I've had creature work before. It's just there's a lot more um, cartoons and stylized work. Being multifaceted isn't necessarily a bad thing, you know. Right, like not as calm as Dia is. Dia. Um, need some ribs. Tick doesn't need ribs. In fact, I should probably I think I'm gonna do that. I think give this. Good yeah, that could be a good tick. Let's do Not really like a good, yeah, let's do...
Do I sculpt every day? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Every single day. There are some exceptions, but mostly every single day. Yep, yep, yep. How many hours? Different every day. But I do sculpt every single day. I don't really like count how many hours. Average. I feel like a lot of people are going to get angry at me for this sculpt. I'm going to have like a lot of angry, angry boys. But about this one. I'm angry and you're right here. <laughs> uh. The revolutionary tick? Is it? What's it revolutionizing? Gross, we could stop. You always gotta do that like off weight, you know? You always gotta go off weight when it comes to uh, us. I do ask by cavity. You do have arms. Little tiny. This guy's an alien tick though, so it's not like... So weird. Right down. 
about artistic burnout. You've been drawing for about eight or so years, and there's been times where you hated it and you were making up. Oh, yeah, I, I understand that. And for some people, it really comes down to asking yourself if it's, um, if it happens to be, um, that you that you like the idea of being an artist more than doing the art yourself. Some people it actually comes down to that, which sounds really messed up, but sometimes you gotta ask yourself that. But sometimes really all it comes down to is you're putting too much pressure on yourself and you need to take a step back and take a break and then come back to it. Understanding that every single bad thing that you do is on that journey of being better and better. So. Yeah, yeah. So like, it's it's all it's all pressure. It's all like putting pressure, way too much pressure on yourself to be good. You know, like at the end of the day, and it's gonna sound also bad, but when you're, let's say like you post something on social media, how many people's art do you just kind of like flick through and you like scroll over top of? At the end of the day, like, you gotta be doing this for you because as much as people say that they really like your art and stuff, most people will just look at it for a total of, like, two seconds. You're lucky if even that, right? All, a lot of what your art is to a lot of people, unfortunately, is an impression. And to that, I have to say, there was somebody who said it before, and I retweeted that as well, but it's just... You're not a content creator, and you shouldn't put your pr like pressure on yourself for that. You are an artist. First and foremost, you are an artist, and artists are very sensitive, and we put ourselves in what we do, and that can be paralyzing, especially in today, where you're just seeing newsfeed after newsfeed of like so much art content, right? And that's where it's just like you. You gotta like step back and say, okay, I don't care if this is bad. Like, I like doing this, don't I? I like doing this. I'm just gonna do it for me. And it's okay if it's bad because you're still doing it for you. You're still making your art for you. And that's that's really what you have to like try and rationalize with yourself or something like that. Motivation on doing modeling? So when it comes to like 3D modeling, I don't actually like I don't enjoy retopology and all the technical stuff. I like sculpting and painting personally. Like that's my favorite part of the pro process. So usually I just do that, you know? Like I focus on that. However, if you want to like a job as a 3D modeler, you have to do more than just that, right? So if that's what you want as a job, then you have to tell yourself, "Okay, I got to sit down and actually do it." And just gotta actually just just do it. There is no like, you know, magic motivation. A lot of it is a lot of it is forced. Knew it was a hat the whole time. <laughs> oh yeah, it was the same. Yeah, sorry. I, I'll change the color. I just typically I'm not like coloring stuff. Stream. Yeah, we are doing it. Is it a cut? No, I just used the paint thing from, uh, from ZBrush. Oh, 
not custom. Sand crab. It's a tick. It's a tick, I tell you. Do I use reference when I sculpt? Typically, um, when I first start a sculpt, uh, you know, like a this is this is way too much spec on it, doesn't? It? Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's so much better. Wow. Okay. Um, typically, when I'm like starting a sculpt, I will just kind of like sketch. Uh, unless it's like for something very specific and then I'll get a reference for it, but you know if it's just like Yeah, if it's just if it's just for fun then a lot of the time like on these streams like I don't reference I just like do the sketch But if it is for a project then yeah, I will definitely reference What's the Sade you're listening to? Um, I'm listening to a playlist from Pretzel Rocks. It's like copyright free. Sick. Is it the same with Photoshop about layer by layer or not? Um, like when you're not coloring things? Yeah, like I, I go layer by layer. Up. I'll just layer things on top of each other. Unless I'm painting, I usually paint all in one layer. It's too...
A sigh across the ocean? I'll try to remember that. I probably won't, I'll be honest with you, but I'll try to remember that. Hi, Sean. Making a tick, an alien tick, nasty thing. Alien tick. A little bit of grass. Just a little tiniest bit. turn the color off for now and just kind of like sculpt <sighs> kind of tired for color anyways If maybe I can use the rake. Just gonna use. It's all just specifically for the spec, by the way. How do you color in? Yeah, it's poly paint. Um, what was the material that I was using? It was a uh, skin shade four. Shade four comes with ZBrush.
Yeah, I use Keyshot. I, I use Keyshot and then I paint over in ZBrush. No, I don't participate in NFTs. <laughs> Break symmetry on this? I mean, if I were to pose it, I guess, but I don't really know. How do I make the hair? Um, it's with, uh, it's with, uh, fiber mesh. Do I still use some kind of reference for this one? This one I'm thinking of a tick. Yeah, I did this thing in three hours. I mean, most of it was talking, though. <laughs> we were talking about, like, like I was literally, like, sitting here, like, spacing out. <laughs> if 
Thanks, just me. <laughs> That's why we build flamethrowers. If something like this existed, that would that would really suck. It would really suck. Really, really suck. I'm using a Cintiq 22 HD. Hmm. Yeah, the uh, the flood from Halo is very very tick-like, isn't it? <laughs> 